This is Revival in Reformation Television. Keep watching. Welcome to Word Express. Welcome today to your favorite short in righteousness. We call it Word Express. Now, we are making a lot of progress in our pursuit of spirituality, which is very essential, a must for every believer. Yesterday, I brought a dimension when I spoke about spiritual immaturity, reading from Hebrews chapter 5. And so we need to make progress and come to spiritual maturity. And spiritual maturity only happens when we pursue spirituality. That means our Christianity is no longer vague, nor shallow, nor superficial. We are not merely scratching the surface. We are digging deep into the wonders, into the wonders of God's kingdom. And it, it, there is no better place to come because it brings you to rest and satisfaction and joy from what God did by his son on the cross of Calvary. So Hebrews 6 verse 1 says, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Remember I said in previous episodes that you can enter into God's kingdom, but you just come into the door. And then from the point of entry to eternal life, to eternity, it's, it's a world of, you know, you can't describe how big, how vast. And that's where the journey begins. So you have to leave the point of entry and go in. And the journey continues until we see Jesus. And that's amazing. So can you imagine now, somebody comes to faith in the Lord Jesus and just stays there and is dealing with elementary things. Oh, I'm born again. And I'm a work in progress. Uh, every time you have uh, issues, uh, you, some young people today will say, I'm depressed. Uh, I have mental challenges. It wasn't so before because the joy of the Lord was our strength. Nobody was going to church to look for miracle. We all went to church to look for God. And we sang songs like, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You know, that what makes me glad is the fact that Christ is in me, the hope of glory. So the things of this world, the material world is inconsequential to us. So that's been maturity and stability in us. And we owe it to the present generation to teach these principles of God's kingdom. I like that. It says, so leaving the discussion of the elementary principle. So, Amplified Version says, Therefore, let us go on and get past the elementary stage in the teachings and doctrine of Christ, the Messiah, advancing steadily, not just advance, then you stop, but steadily toward the completeness and perfection that belong to spiritual maturity. Let us not again be laying the foundation of repentance and abandonment of dead works, you know, which is the formalism, dead formalism. What does it mean about dead works? Maybe you are wondering, what is dead works? Uh, dead works is the routine of the law, the rudiments of the law. You know, the, the burning of the fire, 24 hours, the pouring out of the ashes, the washing, the cleansing, all of the things that were just types waiting for the antitype in Christ Jesus and which Christ has totally fulfilled on the cross of Calvary, that by the word of God we are now cleansed. It's not by the washing off of the ashes and the pouring out of the ashes and the kindling of refreshed fire because the Holy Ghost baptism has come upon us and the fire of God is now residual upon us and in our lives. I, I like verse uh, 2. It says, of the doctrine, continue of baptisms, you know, people are still talking about baptism, of laying on of hands, and baptism itself is a very deep subject. A lot of people think that this baptism is just about being dipped in water and brought out. Yes, that is true. But the significance 
of that exercise is what really matters. And, and I'm trusting God that it's one of the things we'll be able to, you know, uh, discuss in this um, episode. Of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Amplify said, with teachings about purifying the laying on of hands, the resurrection from the dead, and eternal judgment and punishment. These are all matters of which you should have been fully aware long, long ago. So, Paul, oh, sorry, I said Paul, you know, a lot of people allude that Paul wrote uh, Hebrews and many others says, no. Okay, but whoever wrote it, he says, and this we will do if God permits. If indeed God permits, we will now proceed to advanced teaching. And I'm sure you are ready for these advanced teachings. You need it. You need it. Can you imagine a child is born, one year or a year plus, you take them to the crutch, you take that child to the crutch, the, the play group, then maybe at two years, he starts the nursery, Three, four years. In our days, you have to be six years old before you can even go to primary school. There was no nursery then, at least in this part of the world. So they go to primary school. From primary school, that is not the end. That's just the beginning. Then you go to, you even go to modern school. After modern school, you go to secondary school. After secondary school, you do your advanced level. And then you proceed to the university. If you have a direct entry to the university, okay, so you will have to do prelim, okay? But if you have done some, you know, written some, you know, courses or subjects, and you are able to put your uh, number of credits together at a sitting, then you can, you can go. So this is what happens. So there are so many things to explore in the world of the spirit for those who are willing to go forward. Can I say this to you before I close? When you enter into the realm of spirituality in advanced teaching of the gospel, the stress vacates your life, the pressure, the, the mental torture and challenges will go because you will have received those things that can give you stability in the midst of issues of life. That is where many Christians don't come. And that's why we see a lot of problems today. Today, you can hardly tell the difference between a born-again child of God and a, a normal sinner. You can't tell the difference. They all go through the same challenges, which is right, but we are all consumed by the same challenges, whereas for the sinner, the challenges of life consume them, but for the child of God, the challenges of life refine them and even make them better. I want you to continue to share and to mention don't forget to like and to comment and subscribe. And Monday, by the grace of God, we will be diving into the deep things of the Spirit. Until then, remain blessed, remain rapturable, and the grace of God be with you. Bye. This is Revival in Reformation Television. Keep watching.